es intimidez Como la ven no le importa dónde y cuándo Pero nada no he hecho, no soy el que la mando Nunca lo seré, su carácter no es de niña Que la puede controlar cualquiera Y me encanta, yo lo sé Independiente Como tú y verás Y me encanta, yo lo sé Independiente Como tú y Vamos lento, ya Que si nos apuramos Sabes que no es, te doy el desquite, que me quites Todas esas ganas que te tengo en lugar, todo el mundo sabe que tú y yo somos más que panas Pero nos vamos lento, que el que se apura no llega a nada, no llega a nada Sentence. And you'll no longer fear my presence. So you thought I. 
Thought you knew me so much better. You're on a lifetime sentence. So now you never feel my presence. So you thought I would let this slip. Thought you knew me so much better. What's going on? What's going on? City, age, gender in the chat room. How we doing? How we doing? Friday night. Let's go. 
Let's get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to your new destination for some of the most interesting content. This side of the Pecos. <laughs> How are we doing tonight, people? Oh, before we get into it, I need everybody to go ahead and a uh, big shout out to all the patrons who make this show possible. Shout out to the moderators. Shout out to the people that have been down since day one. Shout out to the members of the channel. You know, just give your just give yourselves a hand. You just look so lovely. <laughs> Sexual chocolate. They play so well, won't you agree? Give yourselves a hand. I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. <laughs> I <laughs> remember let the children laugh to remind us how we used to be. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, they can't take away my dignity. Because the greatest love of all is inside of me. Yeah, yeah. Sexual chocolate. Sexual chocolate, Mr. Randy Watson from the What's Going Down episode. Of, that's my mama. That's right. Your godfather is a unique guy. I have like an encyclopedic kind of memory. So whatever I committed to, I can memorize. I.e., I used to remember all the phone numbers back in the day before we had smartphones and people used to have to go to the club with a pen and a paper. I was the Rolodex. Look it up. Uh, I have an encyclopedic knowledge of fragrances, fashion. But where I really shine is movie trivia. If I'm on your team, we're going to win. This has been documented and proven at several companies. Uh, why are we talking about this? Because I can. It's my show. It's my show. And that just lets you guys know you need to be more well-rounded. How many of you guys in the chat room can honestly say, in 2020, you have been surprised with some of my content. How many people can honestly say, you know what? That guy surprised me. You know one of the things that tends to surprise people the most? And I'm kind of funny. I have a pretty unique sense of humor. And it tends to take people, catch people off guard because they look at me and see this suit in this present presentation they're like ah so yeah where's all this going you got to be true to yourself you got to be true to yourself in order to to have people like you look man you are who you are and i've said it so many times on this broadcast stop trying to be things you're not stop torturing yourself trying to become something you're never meant to be You know, uh, when I did that broadcast about, you know, high value this, high value that. And see, one thing that men worldwide have had to learn and understand and adjust to is the world doesn't lie to us. The world doesn't lie to us in general. It is what it is. If you're short, you're short. If you're ugly, you're ugly. If your breath stink, your breath stink. If your eyes look crooked, the world will tell you. Boys learn this from an early age. When we were one, two years old, we started notice you knew whether or not you were a cute little boy or not. The world stopped lying to us far back than we can remember. But women, oh no. Women on the other hand, women on the other hand, you have been lied to. Uh, and you have been coddled far more than any other time in history over the last, let's say since 19, 
75 or 80, let's say 1980. Since 1980 on women, you have been, how I don't want to say lied to, you've just been shielded from some uncomfortable truths. We have been getting closer and closer to the more PC, politically correct, not wanting to hurt anyone's feeling, everyone gets a trophy kind of world. And as such, women, in my opinion, you have paid the ultimate price. Why? Because you have been detached. A lot of women have been detached from reality. <laughs> You've been detached from reality. Um, if you go, if you are a Christian, if you're a Christian, there used to be a time that where if you were a unwed mother, you would not show your face in church, much less show up with one, two, three, four children out of wedlock with multiple dudes and sit on the front row and have the nerve to jump up and get happy and run up and down the aisles. We have gotten to the point to where can nobody tell women anything, in my opinion. But then you hear women always talk about how much men lie. Men lie. Y'all need these Negroes lie. These men lie. They got here, always out here lying to us, out here lying to us. Well, here's the thing. I got a question. If one out of four black women will get married in their lifetime, that means three out of four of you will never walk down the aisle. And if the larger majority, if the greater majority of people today cannot do not or have not had sustained relationships, meaning relationships past 12 months where it's been Facebook public. See, relationships only count, in my opinion, if they're public. This like engagements and all that other stuff. I actually knew somebody, know somebody who's talking about he and his girlfriend are going to be engaged. And I asked him, are you going to do it in front in public, in front of everybody, da, 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 da. And he's like, well, why do I need to do that? I'm like, it don't count. And we went through it. He's like, you know what? That makes sense. She's like, you know, I wanted to do it this way. But she said that I was like, man, women want to have that story. But anyway, but anyway, before, uh, like it says right, right there, women say men need to stop lying. But my question is, which men are you talking about, ladies? Oh, before we get into it, let's get these likes up. Let's get these likes up. Let's get these likes up. Uh, and tomorrow night is when I am going to touch on the Will and Jada story. I'm not going to touch on it tonight because I've got some background stuff to do. I got some clips and things I need to put together. Tomorrow night is going to be a special Saturday night broadcast discussing Will and Jada. And I, high value man, high value lifestyle, marriage. Do you really want, <laughs> I don't even want to touch the question tomorrow night. It's going to be, do you really want to be, do black women really want to be married? That's the, that's the title for tomorrow night's show. Do black women really want to be married? Because I will tell you, black men want to be married. But we got to start asking the question, do black women truly want to be married? That's tomorrow night. Do not highlight me, Green Machine. Thank you. Appreciate it. But don't do that. Don't do that, please. All right. When we say we need to stop lying, let's get the likes up to over. We got to get the likes up to over 50 percent, man. It's almost 1,100 people in here. And then we have 500 likes. When you say men need to stop lying. I agree. But you know what? When we say men need to stop lying, I think we need to talk about who needs to stop lying. It's not Blake, Lee, Ahmed, Keith, and Enrique, my Henrys. It's not the Blue Henry. It's not the Blake Henry. It's not the hit squad that need to stop lying. You know who needs to stop lying? Hold on. Tell your good lies. 
You know who needs to stop lying? Who needs to stop lying, Hot Lips? Hot Lips, who needs to stop lying to these to these women out here? Your preachers need to stop lying to you. Steve Harvey. These love gurus need to stop lying to you. Anybody who's not telling you the unvarnished truth needs to stop lying to women. And here's some of the lies that need to be, here's some of the lies that need to stop being told to women in general, black women in particular today. Number one, black don't crack. Black don't crack is one of the lies that needs to stop being pushed to black people, black women, because what does it do? It allows women like the woman that called in last night to be near retirement age talking about there's so much more juice left in the orange. Black don't crack. We need to stop all the age lying to women. We need to stop calling women who are 30 plus years old. We need to stop calling women in their 30s young women. You're not young women. You're middle aged women. You're middle-aged women for life. You're old when it comes to marriage. So we need to stop all this, this, uh, it don't matter what age you are. No, that black don't crack. Anything that helps women uh, not be realistic about their age, we need to stop. We need to stop that. Thank you. Uh, we need to stop this, this whole thing about thick. Thick, curvy, voluptuous. No, you're fat. We actually have women who can be look you dead in the face at 25 years old and be a size 16 and think they are fine. We need to stop lying to women. If you are, if you are, if you are men, I like a little meat on my. Uh, on, you need to stop lying, because the only reason you like women like that is because you're broke. Listen to what I'm saying before you get upset. Show me the woman a man would pick if he had five million, five hundred million dollars in the bank, and I'll show you the woman he really wants. See, it's easy to say, I like a woman that's got a little more meat on her bones and this and that. When you're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, but when you're making five, six dollars $600,000 a year, you ain't looking at that same woman. And when you're making five or $6 million a year, you laugh if y'all are in that same proximity. So you need to stop lying to them. Why? Because women believe these things. Women believe the positive press. You tell them black don't crack, they think, hey, don't matter how old I get, I still can move around in my 40s and 50s like I did in my 20s. Wrong. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. We only have 600 likes up. No, no, no. We, we what, what are we doing? We're going to have to, uh, okay, we're going to take a quick intermission because I'm not seeing the likes move. And, uh, uh, yeah, 1,300 people watching. We got to get these likes up. I will go ahead and do the intermission now. Because we already, we already about to go to that danger zone. Let's get the likes up, people. See, when you tell women they are thick and it don't matter what their age is, oh, well then why do they, why do they need to do anything any better? Hmm? Why do the women need to do anything any better? If they can be older and feel like they can still be Stella and get her groove back, or... If uh, if if it don't matter how she look, if she's just thick, you know that's if that's what it get down to. Then you can't be mad at these women if they running around here looking like who done it with their face up on the TV. You can't be mad at them if you're not telling them the truth. What other lies do we need to stop telling women? We need to stop calling women queens. 
We need to stop calling women queens. First, let me apologize to you. I am sorry, black woman, that you did not have your father in the household. I am sorry that you did not to be, get to be a little girl and get to be daddy's little princess. I'm sorry you didn't get that. I am. It's truly unfortunate that so many of you did not have a chance to be a princess and daddy's little girl and all that stuff. However, you're over 18. Princess is reserved for women teenage and under. The only way to become a queen is to be married to a king. You're not queens, nor are you princesses. See, when you walk around telling women that they're royalty, you cannot be surprised when they act uh, in an elite fashion. Mm-hmm. Understand something. Understand something. That queen stuff has to go. Any man who's calling you a queen, in my opinion, is doing you a disservice. It's kind of like setting you up for that okie doke. All right. Since we're in this whole thing about some things we need to stop, men need to stop lying to women about, need to stop lying telling them that by being black, we're special. We're, we're like, you know, the melanin and all. Look, you may be special to your son, your daughter, your family. You may be even special to uh, a particular group, a segment of the men in your race. But you're not special. You're just a woman. You're average. You're normal. Just like when you have so many women talking about, I put off relationships and all that stuff for my career. And it turns out that you are, like you said, hairdresser, yoga instructor, that kind of stuff. I made that point a month, uh, over a month ago. You got all these women talking about their careers and you don't have a career. You got a job. Okay? We need to stop telling them that you're special. No, you're normal. You're average. Because women tend to believe these things. And here's going to be the hard one. We need to stop telling. Preachers need to. You need to stop believing. This God ordained. Jesus going to work it out. Being in a relationship, getting a man is a natural choice. God ain't got nothing to do with it. And Jesus ain't your husband. Stop putting your, we need to stop allowing women to put their issues off on Christianity and the Bible. You need to call it out. Especially if you say you're a Christian, do not allow women to put that off on God. Because no. And for the <clears throat> and that the reason a lot of women are in the position they are today, black women in particular, the reason that black women are so unmarried is because of racism, white supremacy, patriarchy, colorism, and any of these others. Other things, no. Out of slavery, you were the most married people. Up until 1964, black folks knew just fine. The problem, the biggest problem in the black community today is we do not have a culture of relationship. We have a culture of individuals. We don't have a culture where men and women have relationships. We don't even have a culture where men and men work together to build businesses. But today we're talking about the women. See, men get told the truth of our lives. We understand. 
But when I listen to guys tell women what they want to hear, share, you know, skirt the truth, not be direct. You leave a woman, a typical woman, a little wiggle room and she's going to slide right through it. But oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. What do we got going on up in this mug? What's going on up in this mug? Now, how come so many women get mad when you tell them, don't blame that on God, don't blame it on Jesus? Because here's the thing. What's next, ladies? What's next, what's next, what's next for you if men start telling you the truth? But before we do that, we got to. Before we do that, we got to get on to the next thing. We got to take a little intermission. Because y'all tripping. Money work. Y'all tripping. Yeah, stop telling them they're they independent. They don't need no man. They strong. You need to start telling them you're the weaker vessel. You need a man. You're, you're average. You're normal. You're fallible. You're the weaker vessel. You should know ever a woman talk crazy to a man like she You should never hear a woman say, I can, I'll beat your tail. When should you ever hear a woman tell a man she can knock him out? You can't get a new plan with old eggs. You can't get a new plan with old eggs. Tomorrow we night we discuss Will and Jada. Make it rain them likes. Make it rain them likes. Do I see BGS it more up in here? Is BGS it more up in here? Big head Ben. What's up, big head? BGS, if you have a second, when I drop the link, could you come on and talk about culture and explain where culture comes from? Give a, I want to give you five minutes on culture. What's going on, Brian? BGS, I'm about to drop the link for you. Drop the link for everybody because tonight's a Q&A for the ladies. Ask me your questions, ladies. Because unlike Steve Harvey, unlike Derek Jackson, unlike the Roommates Podcast and all the other guys, good work. Over here, this is where the men come. Somebody said you like Hitch. Yep. I've often said I'm like the hitch of fashion. Yep, people say you like you're like hitch. Yep, I'm like the hitch of fashion. Always have been, always will be, because at the end of the day, my clients are the men that you ladies want to be wives to. That's right. I'm looking at a whole I'm looking at a whole lot of men on this side that you would love to be wife to. In my Facebook group of over 700 people, roughly 70% men, over 400 replies on the comment thread, how many men want to be married? Only three out of the over 400 replies were no. That means over 397 were like, oh yeah. And these men are vetted by me. You can't be over there with no job, broke, and just a bunch of opinions. The point is, who can risk telling you the truth? See, it ain't my job to be a love guru. It's not. Who can risk telling you the truth? Who are you going to listen to? Because if you've been being lied to, 
if you've had your feelings protected so much, if everybody's got to worry about you're being rude, men aren't going to worry about all that. Who can tell you the truth? That's the question I've been asking. Who can tell you the truth? Join the show. Who can tell you the truth? Who can risk telling you the truth? Because here's the net net of it. The way things are going right now, the way things are going right now, <clears throat> if somebody doesn't start telling some truths to more women and more women start recognizing that they need to do something different, we're going to have a lot of funerals where it's going to be one tombstone. You're going to have Diane buried next to Barbara, buried next to Janet, buried next to Kim, buried next to Keisha, buried next to Helen. Ain't going to be, you're going to have female. <laughs> Imagine when you start having uh, women's only cemeteries, Judge Dre. Can you imagine that, Judge Dre? Judge Dre, imagine somebody say, hey, man, we need you to come out and do some contract work. We got a new concept. You know, this spins the bubble, this spins the economy. Well, well we're going to have, uh, there are some women out here who, they, don't, they only want to be buried in feminist, feminist funerals. Feminist funerals, that'd be a good idea. Feminist funerals. Feminist funerals and feminist cemeteries. Going to have a female, uh, uh, you know, giving the eulogy. A uh, female pastor, you know, giving the words. She's going to have a female crew. But she's going to have some men lowering it down because you don't want to drop that. And damn sure going to have some men throwing that dirt because you don't want to drop that. Can you imagine a female uh, 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 cemetery? That's what we're going to have. Female cemeteries. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to have uh, Master Teacher BGS come in here. I want him to explain to you guys culture. Because we throw a lot of things around about black race. And it's more our culture than anything else. I'm giving about five minutes so this can be memorialized on this channel. You guys need to don't. What I need you to do is I need you to turn off whatever you're doing right now. I need you to pay attention. This brother has done the work, the research, and he understands. Give him five minutes to explain culture. To have it be your working definition of what we need to improve improve and or change in the black community let me make sure he's on there bgs are you here can you hear me i can hear you okay go ahead uh, uh you know kevin you're a chemist so you know you're a chemical engineer so you know what a resultant is right? yes you put two things together you get a, an output right yes and uh culture is not actually real it's actually the resultant or the combination of or the reaction of uh, a human biology, which we need to survive, you know, humans don't change that often, and your environment, which shouldn't change as often, right? Mm -hmm. Put those two things together, the resultant will be culture. So depending on where you live, uh, uh, what's around you, your culture will change so that your biology, who you are as a human being, can adapt to it, okay? That is the simplest working definition of what culture is, okay? So. Um, so if your culture changed, like the modern culture, like we have uh, cars, we have uh, iPhones, we have computers, okay, because our, our, our artificial environment will change the way we, the rules that we write to actually adapt to it, to mm -hmm. actually uh, teach our children, uh, talk to each other, date, work will change because the environment that, that we're working with will change. Okay. 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 So let me ask you the question. Who transmits culture in the uh inside of a uh, go ahead okay uh, uh dell jones you know back in i think 1992 okay because he actually wrote culture bandits mm -hmm. and what he told us is that uh the, the the men actually established culture but culture is actually transmitted by the mother to child okay for the first seven years okay you know i think what we should do is have a show on this topic because mm -hmm. a, a lot of people are grasping for answers and I'm hearing a lot of things get kind of mismatched, thrown together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really would like to have a time where we really could really talk about this and this yeah. only. I'll send you an email and let's try to set up a show. But what I want to give people is just a working definition that they could use to understand that we have a culture issue in black America. Yes, we do. And, uh, it's, it's and, and we, need to, we need to change our culture. Uh, yes. Thank you very much, brother. Yeah, because uh, if, if there were a very good book on basically the basic uh, uh, 
uh, what we call Negro culture, basically, Ado's culture was actually written by E. Franklin Frazier back in the 1930s. Actually, a very similar book called the the uh, uh, the Negro Family in the United States, and he went all the way back to slavery. Okay, and he actually told you uh, what you what why we're doing it, what we're doing that's still adapt today. That's how come our our culture is upside down because that was established mm -hmm. by the slave master. Uh, back under slavery, and we and that has been passed down uh, from from mother to daughter mm -hmm. for the last 180 years, right? So that this this culture is entrenched, which is why we can't we can't really work together. It's like a black man can't really work mm -hmm. together because we're really not allowed. Okay, that's not the way that we're taught. That's not how we're passed down, because in our culture, unfortunately, uh, uh, black men are not. Uh, are not valued, okay, in our culture. In our, unfortunately, in our culture, not the same. Not say not the same way that say like a Jewish mother. You know, even though they have a matriarchal culture, the Jewish mother holds her son into high esteem. She wants the best son, the best man that she can get. Mm -hmm. And she would. They, Jewish Jewish mothers and Jewish people teach their sons how to work together. They're actually forced how to work together. Same right. thing with Arabs. Same some same thing with white people. It's a different culture. And they've they've already said uh, who who that that who that child's mother is is it will determine the success of that child. Unfortunately. All right, man. Let's do this one a little bit later on. But thank okay. you for coming on. I appreciate okay, you no giving a quick overview. BGS, thank you very much. Look All here, right. man. Uh, shout out to BGS. You know, he actually opened my eyes to this whole different. I thought I understood what culture was, uh, and its importance in this whole black America experience. We have a culture that needs improvement. All right, so we're gonna move from that point on. Uh, men need to stop lying, I agree. But it's not the men you ladies talk about because the reality is far too many of you are not married. You don't have any, you don't have a history of long-term relationships. We have a hookup culture right now nationwide. So where are men really lying? I think men are telling you more truths is than any and ever before. Now, what men are lying to you? The men that are getting your money in some form or fashion. No shade. And they're the ones that need to stop lying because of what they're telling you helping you. But the problem is, can they risk telling you the truth? Can who can tell you who can tell women the truth? All right. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, you were here the other day. Hello. Yes. Hello. Okay. What do you have on the show? I actually was calling because I do believe that it's important for men to tell women the truth. Uh, so I was calling because I was curious to know what you thought about my face rating. Your what? Um, my rating. Like how, if you saw me in the street, I was just curious to know how you would okay. rate me based off of... All right, let me ask you a question. You're the young lady who was dating the man who was 46 to 50 and you were 19 to 23. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that show was a couple of three days ago, right? Yes. Have you talked to your father since then? Yes, I did. Did you tell him you were on the show? Yes, I did. What did he say? Well, he didn't think it was necessary for me to be a part of someone's show. He thought that it was best for me to come and talk to him directly mm -hmm. uh, about how I, oh, about my experience Mm -hmm. uh, with the older gentleman, which I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I know in the show previously, I didn't. I told you that we were no longer in communication. However, what I didn't clarify is that we were just strictly friends, and my father knows about that. Um, and he comes to my events, so it's where we're just. Okay. Uh, all, right, all right, all right, all right. When you women start using too many words, you're trying to bullshit. You spoke to your father and he felt yes. like you don't need to call in. You need to talk to him. Yes. Uh, 
Which is what I said. Which is what I said at the show initially. Um, what's going on and why you can't talk to your dad? Or you don't want to talk to your dad? No, I do want to talk to my father. Okay. Like we're, wanting we're to? We're building a relationship. Okay, wanting to, but you don't. Not about important stuff. You hear the th- you hear the forty six year old man from your dad for three years. So what's going on? The reason you can't y'all don't have a relationship to where you can talk to him. It's it's I don't I know that the show is technically not for that, but we just had a very complicated relationship where there was just a lot of verbal abuse going on in the household, which caused me to seek counseling or therapy to get over that for me to be able to communicate with them. So right now we're on a better level. Mm-hmm. That's why I was able to talk to him recently. Did uh, your mom and, and dad, are, your mother and father are married? They're married, but their relationship is just a little estranged. They're going to counseling. Okay. But were you in their house until you graduated from high school? Yes. All right. And then when you graduated high school, where'd you go? I still live with my parents. I'm I, I'm in college. Uh, hold on, hold on, still... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you ever lived on your own? No. So what you're telling me is you live in the house with your mother and father while you're in college, right? That is correct. And you hid a whole three year plus relationship from your father while you entered his roof. Yes, that is correct. And you're saying the reason is because the verbal abuse. It was more of issues that I had when it came to communicating with him. But was was it his fault or your fault? Because see, when I, when people are usually in abusive situations, they leave. I originally, I wanted to leave my household, but I stayed originally when people, when people are in a, abusive situations that as reason for them to cite, I can't do something because of the abuse. They, uh, they get away from the abuse. See what I hear too often from women is you throw up all kinds of things about men, abuse and this and that. And I'm very specific when women start leveling charges about men against abuse. What do you mean by verbal abuse? So the abuse would be the kicker was that he, so this was before. Man, I got other I people had, on the show. Just get right down to it. So what are some of the things he did? So he would throw things at me. So if something was by my door, he would throw it at me. Um, he told me that he would call, and this is before I got in any relationship with anyone. He was saying that he would call his friends and tell them that I would be available to perform different activities. Uh, he would call me. Uh, no, you know, no, 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 ma'am. No, no. He would call, he would, okay. He would call your boyfriends and tell them you'd be able to perform. No, no, no. Uh, no, uh, he was saying that he would call his friend to perform different activities on okay. that. What does that because mean, that, ma'am? Just speak. You, just keep it simple. What are you talking about? So, Palacio. He was saying that due to my... He was just saying that at that time. And that was before... Your father would say this? Yes, my father had said that. Yes, that is correct. He said what, ma'am? I still don't understand what you said your father said. So, my father said... Because I don't want to curse or anything on the show. So, my father had stated that... Because I was in an argument with him. Right. Disagreement. He stated verbatim Uh that he would call his friends and tell them if they needed their. Right. I know where you're going, man. Okay. So, okay. So, so you mean you packed your bags and left the next day, right? I went and stayed at my aunt's house. No, no. But you packed your bags and you left the next day. Yes, that is correct. And you never came back. No, that I came back. Okay. So it wasn't. So basically, what I'm saying is. See, I don't play this. My daddy was abusive stuff when you just want to be a princess. You're making it seem like your father was just this tyrant. Like he came home from work one day and said, you know what? No, he was never Hold a on. I know he wasn't because you're still there. 
And what I'm listening to is a 23-year-old woman who, who lives with your mother and father. And I ask you, why don't you talk to your dad? And you're, acting like, and you're saying there's something wrong with your dad and you. You have this, this abuse, but you're living under that roof. Why don't you leave? If it's that bad, why don't you leave? No, the situation is a lot better. That's why I said that. Oh, okay. To- so if it's a lot better, then why don't you talk yeah. to him? Yes, we started having conversations. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have three siblings. Uh, any any girls or all, what, are, what are they? All girls. Are you the baby? I'm the oldest. The oldest. All right. And the other girls, they still stay with mom and dad too? Yes. Hmm, is he verbally abusive to them as well? Yes, on occasion. It's not like what do you mean verbally abusive. Thing. See, verbally abusive. No, it's, it's uh, verbally not, abusive means, I mean, verbally abusive to some women are just telling you the truth. You said you guys were having all. Uh, you have you, your set. Your father said something foul to you in the middle of an argument. Yes, that is correct. Why were you arguing? So he was upset with my younger sister over something that she had done. And she he started calling her out of her name. She's only a few years younger than me. So I expressed to him that he shouldn't be speaking. Whoa, whoa, to whoa, her. whoa, 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 whoa. Your father was disciplining his his child. Right? Yes. And you as a sibling decided to step to your father and get in between the discipline between him and his child. Yes. Who's paying the mortgage there? Both my parents. Are you paying anything there? No. Why are you saying a goddamn thing to your father? That one, I I can't really answer. That was just... That's what I mean. You jumped all out of a kid's place and he treated you like an adult. Yes or no? Yes, that is correct. Then whatever happened, happened. See, you're coming in here talking about your father said that he could make my fellatio. And I know, see, you're a dangerous young lady. You're one of these kind of women that I tell guys to really be careful of because the way I'm hearing from you is, uh, I don't want to say it, but no. No, no, I'm going to hold that. You're trying to make your father sound like something he's not. Because if he was that bad, you'd be gone. Especially with all yeah. these dudes you were talking about, you were kicking with, with the 46-year-old dude, why don't you go live with him? If it's your father was so horrible, why don't you go live with him? No, I never expressed that he was horrible. Like, Oh, I yes, had... you did. You said, I asked you, why didn't you talk to him? Well, because my father, there was verbal abuse. Well, then why? See, what no one has ever done is no one's ever questioned your bullshit. What's a 19-year-old girl doing with a 46-year-old man living in your daddy's house and you ain't introduced that man to your daddy? You're trying to be grown, but you ain't grown. That's correct. Right. Where's your mother at? Home. And what does she say about your interaction with your father? She doesn't have a response to it. What do you mean she doesn't have a response to it? You never went and talk to her and say, Mom, Dad is mean to me. Yeah, she would go and have a conversation with him about how... You know what you he know, should do? You know, so what if, if your father put you out, what would you do? I would stay with my aunt. Well, why don't you go take care of yourself? Your father only was responsible for you until you were 18 years old. And you making grown damn woman decisions. Kicking it with a man. How old is your father? He's in his early 50s. How old is your father? He's 51. You kicking it with a man your father's age. You were. And you're still trying to say you and this man are friends. You ain't no friends with no 51 year old man. You want to be an adult, be an adult. If 
But I don't think you want to be an adult, man. I think you still want to be a little girl. And you want to hear what you want to hear. You're out here playing in the world, playing at life. Why are you with a 51-year-old man at 23 calling him your friend? What did your mother think about this? She, of course, did not approve. She thought... But you gonna, but you did it anyway, right? Yes. Right. And you said that that wasn't the only man you were with. You were, you were kicking with other men too, right? No. When you asked me at the time, was it a monogamous relationship? Right. Me, it was. To me? Uh, I got to take me. I've listened to it three times. Side. I've got to tell you, I've listened to it three times. My editors also, I heard exactly what you said. You yes. said we were seeing other people. I, if I stated that I saw other people, that is wrong on my part. Of course, man, because you lie by omission yes. because you're a dangerous young lady to talk to. What is it that you're trying to accomplish, young lady? You're going to school for what? Um, I'm studying industrial organizational psychology. When would you be grad? A psych chick. When would you be graduating? I graduated when this semester. You, this semester. Mhm. Mm the summer semester. So when do you plan on leaving? As soon as. Do you have I a job? Am... Yes, I do. You have a, you have a a full time job now. Part time. No, 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 no. You're going to have to have full-time to pay bills. Yes. When are you going to have a full-time job? I am currently actively looking for a full-time job. But you knew you were graduating, weren't you? Okay. What What city are you in? I'm in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Right. <laughs> Do you really have plans to leave the house anytime soon? I don't want to leave yet. Exactly. You want to stay in the house with the man that you call abusive. I I don't believe he's abusive. Because when I first called into the show, I was saying how originally I wasn't speaking to my father because originally I... I was going to, it was a slightly a verbal abusive household. No, no, you didn't say slightly family. verbally abusive. I asked you, why didn't you speak to your father? You said because of history of verbal abuse. Yes. And right. then I said that I No, no, ma'am. I have a very good memory and I can run the tape back. Mm -hmm. If your father heard you saying that about him to another man, do you think he would say she's right? I think he would say that there was... Uh, situations where he is, wasn't favorable for him. What, what do you mean favorable for him? Stop playing with words. You jumped in a you jumped in the middle of your father disciplining his daughter. See, the behavior isn't so bad that you haven't carried your ass out on into the world, and you still want to live under that man's roof. Doing what the fuck you want to do, how you want to do it. The nerve of you. You sound very, very, very immature. Whatever counseling you're in, you need to stay. But there are some things going on with you, young lady, that are not very savory. And your exit strategy from your mother and father's house is not to leech on to a man. You need to get yourself together and decide, do you want to be a daughter or do you want to be an adult? Because when you call over here talking about how your father talked to you and verbally abusive and all this other stuff, when you were living in his house, no. Uh, this is the second time you call the show. Don't call back. Okay. Nope. I do not do this. I do not do. And you guys wonder why I have a problem with this stuff. Mm -mm. I'll deal with a whole lot of stuff. But when I hear women start lying on men, when you start talking about abuse, I know what that does to a man's possible future. 
We got to stop allowing women to lie on men like this. That is dangerous. You guys heard how she's talking. Well, uh, it, it, no, no. See, remember I said psychology chicks? Psychology women? She's not crying. Oh, no, she's not crying. That woman is, that young lady, that woman is very well versed in manipulating men. She was dealing with, she, she's, she, she lied so many times. See, she's not used to somebody catching her in her own lies. She's deceptive. She's sneaky. She's manipulative. You live in, can you imagine hiding a grown, can you imagine hiding a man your daddy's age from him in your own house? In, his, in your daddy's house? You understand that? She was with a man for four years, a man her father's age, while she's living in her father's house, and she hid that man for a full three years. A liar. I don't like lying women. Remember we said we need to stop lying? Well, let's get on to the next side. You women, like her, I hope you remain alone. No man needs to be in the in room with a lying woman because a woman can lie on a man and destroy him. Especially in today's Me Too cancel Karen culture. It is wise for men to understand women who are deceptive, manipulative, sneaky, whatever, and avoid them completely. So she thought she was going to get the kid glove treatment she could play that shit on me that she played on them. No, <laughs> ain't nothing. You got that good that I want it. It's not heartbreaking. It's not heartbreaking. Miss Jones. See, we got to stop saying heartbreaking. What's heartbreaking. Why don't y'all what's heartbreaking about that? How about that stuff's vicious? See, it's this coddling women have with each other. She was raised by mama and daddy. She stepped up. She's in college and got the nerve to step in front of her father disciplining his daughter and she ain't paying the bill. You shouldn't be talking to her like that. Again, remember what I said? If we were in another country, wouldn't even been a question. Heartbreaking. I feel for her father, honestly. He's got a wife and four daughters. I feel for that man. Go watch Ileana Van Zant's show where a woman lied to her husband, lied to her daughters about, uh, and let daughters believe her ex-husband uh fail fail with them. Go listen to what a lying woman can do. So let's get on to it. And why not tell her not to call back to my show? Because you only get two times to call on my show. No. I got no time for that stuff. But let's move on. All right, ladies, reset. Who can tell women the truth? See, the truth I just told that young lady, her father can't risk it. In New York City, <laughs> all we got the, uh, the right kind of phone call to the right office, I shudder to think. Other groups of women can be told, other races of women can be told the truth by their men. Uh, let's look, let's just look at white people. White men don't allow white women to think you can be overweight and it's okay. You, you, you gotta admit when you start, when you first time a black woman heard about bulimia, women making themselves throw up, starving themselves to be skinny. Black women were like, what? Why do you do that? Pressure to be skinny. Black women, you have never had that kind of pressure. Pressure by men and society to maintain a slight weight. Other races of men can put pressure on women to be healthy for their own selves. Who can risk telling you the truth? Because when our program tomorrow, we talk about, do you really want to be married? If you can't be told the truth, you can't be married. 
If a man cannot tell you the truth in 2020, you can't be married. Can't. If you listen to Will and Jada, oh, wait till I break that one down. Wait till I break that one down. And sadly, so many of our women have gotten to the point to where the truth is so hard for you to hear. It's shocking to them. It's like sometimes they'll come to this show and they'll they'll hear something from me and it's like stumping your toe. You do and you got to wait for the pain to travel. And then it's like they got to come back and they're like, well, wait a minute. I know I just didn't hear that nice brother in the suit saying something like that because guys like me, you're used to guys like me telling you that love guru stuff, the stuff that keeps you single. See, I can proudly say that in my Facebook group, uh, one couple that I already met in less than a month, they met in 10 days. I got brothers over here with raising their hand. Hell yeah, I want to be married. Yep. I'll be putting <laughs> what what track record of success do any of these guys have to getting any of you ladies or any ladies you know with a with a man? They can re- give you a book to read so you can go have your waiting to exhale party, but you still empty. Okay, Daisy, you're back. So, ladies, you can call in and ask me what you want. Hey, Kate, can, can, uh. Hello. Hey, uh, Kanisha. You gonna call back and tell me, remember that dude that called last night? Man, how you gonna charge $800 for your image consult? Screw you. Call back, man. I'll give you, I can give you image consult online real free. Hello. Hello. About time you got a microphone to work. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. So, so is this about my, today's show or last night's show? This is about today. It's just um okay. I've called in before. Okay. Uh, um um I called yesterday and it wasn't working and I was trying to say yesterday that I'm a younger woman. I remember I saw I, you yesterday. Okay. Go ahead. And I think I've been doing everything right. The first time I called, um, I was a bit stubborn. Like, I was trying to get my points in, and I wouldn't shut up. And obviously, you oh, you called out. in before last night? No, not last. Um, no, it was before that. Like the first time I called, I was the girl who told you I had a younger boyfriend, and you called me a gold digger and whatever. So. Oh, I don't remember. I, a lot of those to call in. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just think that I've been doing a lot of things right. Um, you think I learned... you've been doing a lot of things right? Yes. Okay. Um, and I have success in my dating life. I'm not married yet, but I'm trying to, you know, do things the right way and find the right partner for me so that I'm not just in a comfortable situation, but like I'm also fulfilled and happy and all of that. So your question is what? Um, I don't have a specific question. But you um, called in to tell me something. You called in before and I called you a gold digger. Right. All right. Uh, um, and- so, okay, okay, okay. My question is, you what you said to me before was you cannot expect your boyfriend to provide for you. Oh, yeah. I remember you. You're the 19-year-old girl that got upset with her 23-year-old boyfriend who was trying to get a job and get himself together <laughs> and he planned dates and then all of a sudden couldn't follow through with the dates because he had to go to work. Um, yeah, that's an oversimplification, but that was me. Yes. Yeah, I know. Person. I'm good at what I, I know. And yeah, you, 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 you're, you're, you're a gold digger wannabe. That's what you are. Okay. But I'm not a gold digger. I feel like there's a uh, difference. Oh, ma'am. Okay. Because I'm. No, 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 no. See, this is what you wanted to basically tell me is I had the wrong estimation of you. Um, n- no. Okay. You, how not old are you? How old are you now? Twenty one. Twenty one, and your 21. boyfriend was. And I'm still. And I'm still. All right, doing this one. You're not gonna do. You're not gonna do what you did last time. I'll okay. let you speak, but you're not All gonna right. overtalk me. What I said to you bothered you so much that you wanted to call me back and tell me that your life is just fine and it's working. 
No, I wanted to tell you that I listened, like I, I, I heard what you said and he reached back out to me, like the guy, my ex-boyfriend. Uh-huh. You mean the guy who couldn't afford to pay the bills? It wasn't, okay. The guy that Not... your, your ex-boyfriend reached back mm-hmm. out to you, right? Yes. Right? And, all, right, and... all right, all right, all right. So is he making more money than he was making before you broke up with him? He is. Okay. And he reached. And how long were you guys together? You guys were together several years, right? We were together for almost two years. Right. Uh, a year so, and a half so he reached back out to up. you for what? When he broke up with me, because I remember I said he broke up with me because I couldn't break, break up with him because I liked him. He reached he broke... back out to you for what? To get back together. Okay, he reached. So in the time we've talked, and I ch- I won't change anything about what I say. I remember you. Mm-hmm. He reached out to you to get back together, and mm-hmm. his and his selling proposition was what because he couldn't he couldn't afford to buy you the shirts and I mean the dresses and the shoes and all the other stuff that you expected a new college student to buy. I remember you. He reached back out yeah, to but- you. Uh, he reached back out to you to, to get back together for what? to get back into a relationship. When he broke up with me, he said that he could, he didn't want to keep disappointing me. Like that was actually what he said to me. I and understand I think, he, so he wanted to get back to get, and how long ago was it? Yeah, I think. How, how long ago was it that you broke up? We broke up for a year. Or broke, was it like nine months? Right, it wasn't that like long. Nine. It was like six, yeah. and six to nine months. So six to nine months later, he wants to get back. Okay, and he's called you up and said, "Hey, Daisy, I want to get back together with you because we were we did it wasn't a bad breakup. Like it there was no animosity. Okay, we broke up because and he we wanted not... to get back together with you because I guess he likes me a right. lot and like he wants you. to get okay. He wants his pocket coochie back. Is he does he have a ring? No ring." <laughs> So what no ring, so you but mean, he so, offered no, to like no. pee off the of- See, the problem you have, young lady, is I told you the truth, and your ego cannot handle it. He wants to get back to you, and I'm trying to be polite. But I'll go ahead and let you tell me. Go ahead and unmute yourself, but you're not going to talk over me. He wants to pay off something. So he wants to pay something off so he can get access back to your panties. I feel like all men want access to I don't that. give a okay. shit if what you feel like. We're talking about a man that's already gone down the path. Ma'am, you yeah, called me. Is- you called back to basically let me know you're doing fine. Congratulations. But here's no, the thing. No, I didn't. Oh, here we go. I, I- here we go. You've been calling me for two days. Two days. Please get to the point. Your ex-boyfriend who couldn't provide for you the first time and wouldn't disappoint or whatever, whatever, wants to get back with you, but there's no wedding ring or no engagement. What is it you want me to know? Like I said, the first time I called, I said I wanted to do things right. And okay, well, you're not like what you said, what you said to me was, but you're not. A girlfriend but you're not. does not. Your girlfriend okay. cannot spend this money, but you're not doing things right. Because you're not doing things right. And I'll tell you why you're not doing them right. Okay. I'll tell you why you're not doing them right. What's changed since, what's changed about him in the nine months since you've broken up? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yeah, that's what I thought. Her ego's real hurt. I know. You can either unmute yourself or I'm going to drop you. Because, yeah, last time I'm asking you to unmute yourself, Daisy. (laughs) <laughs> Hello. did you hear what I asked you 
I did. And what has changed in the nine months since you broke up? Um, he's been promoted at his job. He has um, a side hustle now. He has an online business. He has grown in his like faith and spirituality. There's just he's a great guy. So in short, he's making more money. Yeah, he was great. Before, right, which yeah. is why I said you have not you're not doing things the right way. You're still a gold digger. If he was if he didn't have a promotion of more money, you still would not be want want to be with him. On being but a gold digger, on being a gold digger. But you're not going to get this shit from me for free. I hope that young man listens to this show. You are a Oh, wow. Remember this chick this is the one that was sitting back talking about, you know, that he he bought, he should have bought, he, he should pay for my shoes and my hair and my nails and all this at 19 years old. Yeah. Not even a good gold digger, a low quality gold digger. She can be bought back. See, that's what I mean. You could be bought back. She didn't say he came back and, you know, he's gone through counseling or therapy. His character's improved. This dude just got a promotion. And that's how cheap she is. He can have me back because she's doing things right. Young lady, I'm trying to do you the biggest help, but you but you can't hear it because your ego's too big because you think you're cuter than you really are. You're, 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 you're cute, but you aren't that fine to be demanding the shit you're demanding. Go ahead and think you're all that. I mean, I swear to God. I mean, do y'all, I mean, I was trying to be nice. The dude said, let's get back together. Why you think he wanted to get back together? Because Cause he already know what the coochie like. He like, Psh, I'll just get back with you. I know she'll basically he's saying, you let's just get real, guys. What's this what's this guy doing? He's like, you know what? I know this little I know this chick's a a, a little chicken head. I'll let her know I got promoted and make a little bit more money. And she'll jump. I'll buy her a purse, take her to Ruth Chris, and she and I can get another six months of that of that stuff. Until I finally find the one that I really want to be with because she's going to be the kind of woman that's going to hold me down. This chick right here just want me to pay some bills. So I'll, I'll, I ain't going to offer her no ring. I'm not saying who marry me now. No, no. I'm just going to say come back and be my girlfriend like you were from two years ago. You ain't even getting a promotion, little girl. That's why I say you're a bad gold digger. You're, you're a freaking brass digger. You're a brass digger. You're getting You're going back to a dude that wasn't good enough nine months ago just because he offered to pay off your uh, cell phone bill. And he's going to just knock it out of the box for another six months and then going to dump you on his terms and you're going to be like, oh, men are dogs or whatever, whatever. Ruth Chris, she can't even get out back. Are you serious? And then here's the thing. Understand something, guys. She called last night and try to get in for 30 minutes and then call back today because she's going to set me straight. She's going to set me straight. Oh, 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 poor baby. Poor baby, poor baby, poor baby. That's the ego of so many of these young ladies. And she thinks she's that fine. I mean, I didn't put her picture up because, you know, she's 21. So, I, you know, I'm trying to be nice. But I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> You're going to get, oh, boy, 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 boy. Mm, mm, mm. See, it's ladies like this, that it's like women like this to give you nice ladies a bad name. Dudes get tired of hearing from like, dang, really? So the, the net net of it, let's get back to, let's be serious. Women. You need somebody who can tell you truths, not the truth, but some truths. And it's a hardcore reality to hear that 
tomorrow night we're going to discuss it. I need you guys to go from that woman that was just on my phone to any of the women this week of the ones that said they want to be married. And I need you guys to ask yourself a question. Do any of these women sound like they're uh, that a marriage to them would be a happy undertaking? You want to be married, but it's all for selfish reasons. You don't want to be a wife. You don't even care. You don't even know the men. And what I'm hearing far too often is far too many women think men are just tools. And that's cool. But you better know how to use the tool. You're not even, I'm like, goodness. I don't want to tip my hand about Will and Jada. Po baby. See, and here's the funny thing. The more you start telling, especially women over, how many people saw the show last night? Uh, Kathy, Kathy ain't going to call in. Kathy, <laughs> big Kathy, you know, with a name like Kathy, you have never seen a woman uh, with the name Kathy that's been fine. Kathy, is the name Kathy is the name of a woman that weighs about 260 and she eats mayonnaise out the jar. <laughs> Kathy eats mayonnaise out the jar with her fingers. With her fingers. Smoking cigarettes. Kathy be like <laughs> didn't know the delusion was this bad. See. Women like her get mad, like the lady who, last night, because they really believe that they can still get what's on the open market. Poor babies. Hey, Big Kathy, call in. You need to put one of them, put one of them cats down <laughs> and take your feet out there, feet massager, because you know they swole up because she got the gout. <laughs> she got the gout and her sugar up. So, you know, she probably ate her Popeye's chicken, so she done ate a little salt today, so she swole up. Big Kathy, call in with your sexy ass. I know Kathy, I know Kathy. <laughs> she she eat it with her fingers, not fingers, fingers. She's a three-dipper, Judge. She goes, she goes, mayonnaise straight to mouth. She, oh, <laughs> come on, Big Kathy. Cam up challenge. <laughs> Because, see, I try to make light of it because let me say this. There is a solution for women over 40. There is a solution for women over 40. How many women over 40 are in the chat room and you're feeling some kind of way, but you know you don't want to die. You want to live a happy the rest of your life. and You don't want to die alone. There is a solution. I'm not going to give it for free. You're going to call in to get it. And it's not a joke. There is a solution. I had BGS come on here to speak for a very specific reason. See, and happy women don't come to a man's channel. I mean, understand something up here. If, if Big Kathy was happy, she would be out with her man or her family or whatever. She'd be enjoying life. Big Kathy sitting over there right now eating one of them banquet TV dinners or like one of them old pepperoni. What are, those, what are the cheap pizzas? One of them Red Baron pizzas. She can't even afford Domino's. She got one of them Red Baron pizzas. She got some of them, you know, banquet Chinese egg rolls, a uh, uh, two liter of Diet Coke, uh, and she was because she saved all her good money for the Hagen Dazs. <laughs> she saved all her good money for the Hagen Dazs. And she's sitting over there and she's like, I can't stand him. Oh, dude, saying all these things about us. I'm, I could have got married if I want to. I'm just, I'm single by choice. I'm 
56, but I got plenty of time. Understand something. You think the woman that was 55 had something? I had a woman write this in my chat room. Hand to God. She said, I understand what you're saying. I'm 70 years old and I am in the process of getting myself together. Working uh, over the next two years, I want to get this or that straight. And then after that, go find my find my high and after after that she's going to find her henry her i want a provider male that i can marry and spend the rest of my life with this woman was 70 says for she gonna take the next two years to get herself together and then after that she's gonna all of a sudden go find her provider male i'm like tostino i know right how you gonna be 70 and still needing to get your shit together. I mean, what kind of shit is wrong with you? What kind of stuff is wrong with you if you still need two more years to get yourself together at 70? Tony Davis, who who she gonna get at 72? Jason, I swear to God, it's still in my it's still in my comment section. And she said she wanted to find a provider male. Retirement age was 65. He stopped providing. See, that's why I was so short with that woman yesterday because she was on this, my hook, my God ordained and this and that. Did y'all see that last night? How many of y'all guys saw that last night? God, God got my back and my man, my, my, I'm like, wow. So many of our women, so many women today believe that they can just decide that, you know what? All I need to do is just wish upon a star. And then I can I can just decide I want to have a provider male, and they'll just jump up automatically, like these men just exist. So like they could just go off the provider tree. You know what I mean? God or I, I mean, and my thing is, do you not understand? It takes something to be a man like that. Truly be a high value man. Ain't nobody hate women and there are no men. Hold on. I said it today. If that is not a dysfunctional ass culture, no, it wasn't me. Okay. Infidelity, was it? Uh, uh, you, you make a statement hold sometimes. On, hold on, Allison, I will get back. I'm you make a statement sometimes. Waiting room, Allison, you'll be up next, okay? I can't deal with these these women over like. I make a, I make a statement. Go ahead. Ask your question. Um. Are you mad at? I heard you say I, quite a few times. But, um, unmarried women will generally die alone. Um, but based on my observation, if What's a the woman question? is younger, What's the question? A, What's the question? I don't need a statement. Just give me the question. Wouldn't a married woman who is much younger than her husband die alone as well? Hmm. But she got a chance to be married and have a life and have kids. It's not a trick question. What'd you say? Please no replays. One out of three black women marry. That means three out of uh, you can you can go ahead and get out the show. Seventy five percent most. Don't sleep on banquet. Man, if you are eating banquet dinners, you better get up off my channel, boy. If you eating banquet dinners, then uh, see, you know, when you actually think that you got all the time in the world and, you know, that you can just go pick off the provider mail tree and the men are just out there waiting, you don't have to worry about it. But see, the problem is so many of these women have been lied to. And the question has to be asked for these women. What is what does a happy life look like? If you can't find if you can't find it, if you're one of the three out of four that doesn't get married, does that mean life has to be horrible? Can you have a happy life? What does it look like? And see, that's 
you know, uh, that's a question that has to start getting asked. What does the rest of life look like? What is your what is your end of life plan? What does it look like? Because far too many women still think, you know, I'm going to go find me a man and I'll just let him do it. And that ain't what it is. That ain't what it is. You don't just find a man. You don't just find a guy and then all of a sudden the man just fixes everything. Hmm. The only thing good about banquet is the brownie. Right. So I'm going to leave it open for another 20 minutes. You can call in and ask me whatever you want to ask me. See, when you get to a certain age as a woman, you realize that you, I think some of these folks realize that they don't have what it takes to be in a relationship with anybody, to be, to be happy. And if you don't really have what it takes to be in a happy relationship, what are you going to do? I mean, seriously, if you don't have what it takes to be in a happy relationship, what are you going to do? And instead of just deciding to say, you know what, I'm going to work on my social skills. I'm going to be, you know, it it requires a, a bit of humility, putting ego to the side and just seeing what you can deal with. In a happy relationship. All right. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to turn the YouTube channel off in the background. I only be on Zoom, okay? And instead of just this, uh, whoever it is, Gino, I'm going to say it one more time. You're going to need to turn off the YouTube channel in the background. Only be on Zoom so I don't hear any background noise. Okay. There we go. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's going on? Uh, Well, uh, okay. Give me one. Off the TV, turn off the YouTube stuff in the background. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, Yes. uh, Are you Big Kathy? Yes, I am. You Big Kathy? You're Kathy? Yeah, I'm not Kathy, but I'm big. Okay. What's going on? Um, I am a. I'm sorry. I'm very, I'm extremely shy, and I know I have a thick accent as well. So I apologize for that in advance. You said what? Um, okay, so you have an accent. So go ahead. Correct, I, and I'm extremely shy. Uh, you know. Uh, okay. So the, the reason I'm calling is that um, I am married. Um, I've been married for like uh, what almost 10 well been together for 10 years married 9 years and um, uh, I'm married uh, to somebody younger and um, the relationship of course if I'm calling it because the relationship is not you know that solid okay what well, could you get to the question please Yes, I do have a five years old son, and uh, the thing is, I, I it's just like I, I just, you know, it's just like I really don't know what to do. I want to stay for my son, but at the same time, I'm wondering if you want, if that's okay. gonna. Okay, hold on, hold on. You've been married how long? Nine years. Is your is your husband the father of your son? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? One. Uh, and there's a problem in the marriage? Yes, uh, we really never see eye to eye. We Have you always, gone to counseling? You know, uh, not yet, but since I've been watching you, uh, uh, I have a few people that, um, you know, I'm getting a background. Okay, like so where, let, me, let, me do this, let me do this for you. How old are you? I'm 46. 46? How tall are you? I'm 5'7". And about how much do you weigh? Uh, 265. Okay. 
Let me just tell you the truth, ma'am. If you divorce from your husband, what do you think is going to happen on an open day? Uh, I American? know, I, I know, uh, like my sexual, like is like zero, really. Well, uh, because I used to be, I mean, I used to be, you know, cute. Okay, you know, but, but but my point is this: you and your husband have been married for ten years, and you haven't gone to counseling. Have you discussed your issues? What happens when you try to talk to your husband about your issues? Uh, well, is uh, well, it's just like uh, I don't know. It's something I'm I'm doing, but it's usually like emotionally shut down. He doesn't really want to talk about it. Okay. You know, if I come, you. Know. So, you well, let me say this: counseling, because I don't know what the issues are. I don't know where he's coming from. I don't know how you're bringing it to him. All I know is this. You would do better to stay with your husband and work through your issues because you don't want to be out here on an open dating market. Um, no. No, I don't. No. Uh, well, so you got to. Okay. So you don't, you can't talk to him. He can't talk to you. So that's where counseling comes in. Okay. But also, it also come like two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. You know, I know it's, you know, so I'm, I'm wondering, like, what I'm really afraid of is just, like, when I'm 52, you know, uh, because one of the reasons I'm big is not, is, is no, not no, 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 you're skipping issues, man. One of the reasons you're big? I'm sorry. One of the reasons I'm big is because I have pituitary adenoma. It's like a hormone disorder where it's okay. really upset uh, uh, all okay. the hormone. Do you, okay. I can't, okay. You called in asking about marriage. And now you're going over to your, your weight. Um, I'm sorry. What, is your, what is your physician told you to do about your health? Well, they want like I need to. They were saying brain surgery, uh, but I'm gonna need a second opinion. That oh, was before. Okay, I well then my... I can't. I, I can't address that though. I mean, I understand. If, if you have a a actual a medical condition, that's fine. But whatever it is, you have a husband. This yes, is where sir. counseling goes to, and if. I mean, you you say for better or for worse, and if you if you can't talk to him, you better get in, t in front of somebody so y'all can learn how to talk to one another. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to go alone because I did bring that to no, subject. No, 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 no. See what you want to do? You want it to be easy? Why do no, you have to oh, stop? To listen, doesn't... listen, listen. You have okay. a husband, right? Yes, sir. Going alone does nothing for your marriage. Okay, but I can't force him. I didn't even finish that sentence. It's just Have you cut asked me off. him no. to go. I bet. <laughs> That's a yes or no question, ma'am. Yes, I did. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. No, I don't. Of course, was, I don't know. And what did he say? No. Yes. Yes, I did. I apologize. And yes, what did I he did. say? No. And is this? And does he have any siblings, brother, sister, parents? No, not in America. I, okay, are you in? Do you belong to a church or anything? Uh, no. All right. Well, it's hard to get somebody to go that doesn't want to, but it's not going to be easy, man. Unfortunately, here's the net net of it. None of this stuff is supposed to be easy. Tune tune into my show tomorrow because here's what happens oftentimes with married people. We want this shit to be easy. Okay. You heard the vows. For rich or for poor, in sickness and health, to death do us part. They meant that shit. Correct. They meant it. For rich or for poor, in sickness and health, to death do us part. Those okay. vows said that for a reason. It didn't just say when sunshine is up and down and da 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 da. Now it's hard. You have a medical issue. You're older. You're heavier. He's obstinate. Okay. Still. Neither one of y'all sound like you're going to be any prize to anybody out here on the open market. So this is the hard part. And no one's going to drag you through it. And it's not supposed to be easy, ma'am. If it was, anybody could do it. So if you got to go by yourself, cool. But you still need to go with him. Okay. I mean, okay. Have you ever, have you ever ridden a seesaw? Seesaw? No. You know what a seesaw is? a board with a triangle and one person sits on one side, one person sits on another and you go up and yes. down. Right. Yes. You yes. know what that is? 
Well, what yes, happens if do. somebody is 400 pounds and somebody is 10 pounds? It just stays on one side, right? Correct. Right. Does that Correct. sound like any fun to ride? It doesn't move. If you Correct. go to therapy without your husband, you you sitting on one side. You're not moving. Oh, okay. Right, what are you breathing hard for, ma'am? You got married. I mean, what do you want? To be easy? Yeah. I, I'm... <laughs> well, I'm sorry to inconvenience you. Life is hard. And how old are okay. you? 46? I am 46, yes. Okay, then don't breathe like a 21-year-old a and go, ah, you're a grown damn woman. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Thank okay. you. I mean, seriously, we, we've gotten to the point to where we want everything easy. See, tomorrow's show, when we talk about marriage and divorce, and I would tell you, being in the singles ministry and divorce care, so many women end up walking out of their walking out of marriages that could be saved because they don't want to do the work. When you see some, when you see a divorce, especially in a black couple, black men tend, men tend to remarry, women tend not to. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? I mean, we got a woman that's, you know, has a medical issue. That's true. But you're 46. Why would you want to be out on the dating market at 46, even if you were a dress size two? We have made divorce seem so just easy. Like it's just a thing to do. Like no big deal. Yeah, I know. I, he said she's breathing hard because she's stubborn. I know she's stubborn. I know that. I know that woman is not. Yeah, I, I, man. I read women for. Come on, man. You think I fell for that? That oh, it's just him, and no, you know, I just don't know. No, come on, man. No, 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 no. She want to be in the streets. No, she don't. Don't want to be in these streets. These streets is rough, dude. These streets is rough. to my first year in college. Okay, yeah. so from 15, so from 16 to 19, yeah. okay, then, you, then you skipped all the way up until 36. Well, not that I didn't date. I did date, no, but no, no, serious no, no, relationships. No, 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 I'm just counting serious relationships. Yes, certainly. 16 to 19, then mm -hmm. all the way to 36. And then you were with this person for how long? You're married for well, you guys get together six years total or married six years? Um, I'd say seven years total. Okay, so you knew him for a year and you're married for six. So here's here's your so I mapped out your relationships. You were born in 64, 65. 65. 65. You were yes. you were with somebody from high school. Do we really grade feel to like you're in college? Do we feel like when we're talking to women that are this age, 45 plus, that we're talking to our grandmothers? I mean, seriously. And then from that point on, from 19 to 35, double, almost twice your lifetime, you had no serious Why well, is this not playing out that way? somebody for one year, so. you married them, and you... All right. So... I got a bunch of guys in the chat room. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to, tomorrow night, I'm going to do a special show. We're going to talk about Will, Jada, and who really wants to be, do black men, or who really wants to be married in the black community? Is it black women or is it black men? That's what I got to ask. That's the question I'm going to ask. Who really wants to be married? For real, for real. Not a wedding. Who wants to be married? Is it black men or black women? You know, I think we're going to be surprised. Why are you coming? Hey, dude, don't come in here, Arliss. You mean by know how old and why? Why don't you ask me? 
See, when we get right down to it, I don't want to tip my hand. I don't want to tip my hand. I don't really want to tip my hand, but tomorrow we're going to do it. Will you guys tune into that show tomorrow? Because I typically don't do shows on, on Saturday night. But Saturday night is going to be a good show. Saturday night is going to be a good night show. All right, guys, it's midnight. I got to get up out of here. I got a uh, company coming through here. So, uh, yeah, Big Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Big Kathy, what you gonna do tonight, Big Kathy? Big Kathy, what you gonna do tonight? You gonna finish up them brownie? You gonna chop them brownies? You gonna finish up that mac and cheese, mayonnaise? See, while Big Kathy's sitting over there getting mad at me, my little friend's gonna come by, you know, po thing, and we gonna I'm gonna play a replay and say, look at Big Kathy. They're like, ooh, she sound like she's single. Yes, mm-hmm, yeah. And then tomorrow we're going to do Suit Saturday. Yeah, baby. Tomorrow is Suit Saturday. Good times, good times, good times. All right, we got to get up out of here. Stop lying to women. Ladies, stop lying to yourself. That's the first thing. Until the next time, peace. We are gone. Patreon for videos you will only see there. Videos Monday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. When they're there, they're there. Join me on IG in the front room for videos you will only see there. Once they're posted, they're posted. When they're gone, they're gone. Hit me up. Info at buykevinrsamuels.com with your show idea or go to buykevinrsamuels.com to book your time with me. Do not send me emails this long about anything. If you can't get it done in a few sentences, don't send it to me. Only send me requests for business with there's money involved. Don't give me a shout out. Don't send me enough talking about your story. They won't get read nor responded to. I will block you it's if you send me a message like that. Respect my it's not stuff. What I'm getting into. Yes. Yeah. Nothing can stop me. No. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I. Uh, you need a smoke machine. <laughs> no, man. Uh, good night. No.